Hello everyone, and welcome to part two of our reanalysis of the weather in Ireland over the past year. Today we're doing July 1st to today, New Year's Eve, 31st of December. So early today, we'll release part one, going from January 1st, New Year's Day, till June 30th. So right now, we're starting back on July 1st from the from the from the chart archive on weather.d so it's starting off on july 1st as it says with a low to the north and a high towards the azores and blocking towards greenland that is bringing in a cool and showery westerly breeze we go towards the first day of july and we see this wind go northerly even for a time so it's even cooler and showers get heavier and more widespread now going towards July sixth and seventh, we see a briefly warmer day on on the seventh with some sunshine and temperatures widely into the twenties. But this deep low to our west will soon spoil things and push in on the eighth, bring in showers and storms. Now we go into the second week of July and we see that low pressure is parked over us, so many many showery days with spells of rain around the country as well. More low pressure by, by the 14th bringing some rain showers and breezy as well. And cooler are as it clears. So high summer is more like awesome. And um, we go beyond mid-July and we see for a time higher pressure coming in. So a bit drier and less showery for a time. But we see more low pressure after that and it was cooler with that as well as winds turns to the north for a time. Um, coming towards the end of July now, and we do see another low pressure coming in from the west. What a surprise! Uh, so it was a cool and wet July. Now, it's like in August now. So, to our west, the 1st of August, surprise, surprise, deep low, moving in. And uh, that clears off, brings in a cold northerly. I say cold, it was cool, a cool northerly for the 2nd of August. Actually, um, a bit chilly is all it is. It's not that cold, uh, but it's cool for summer. Um, then into the 13th of August, this low here is Storm Anthony, and that moves eastwards on August 5th, bringing a, a, an area of strong winds, strong northerly winds behind it on August 5th. Then on, the, then on August 6th, we see a showery day, and beyond that we see, um, but actually by August 9th, um, briefly, uh, warm or hot day with bright sunshine as this ridge builds to the east and this low to our west stalls and up comes a lovely wind but by the 10th a cold front moves eastwards and we say bye to that sunshine and here we go again more low pressure in charge after that with spells of rain and showers around the country surprise surprise um by mid-august we see a, a ridge forming actually so this brings some drier and Warm weather at times as well. That which goes for Scandinavia. And then the next low fort comes in. That is Storm Bella. That brings rain, thunderstorms and severe winds. It's actually to the south. That low clears away for, for August 19th. And we're back to the showery flow. Now, um, beyond that, we go into a westerly flow again. More showers, but a bit drier, actually, with some high pressure around. But a trough comes in on the 24th of August, and that brings some cool and showery weather with it, especially on Friday there, and then to the weekends. Now, into the final days of summer, we well, summer, um, we see a uh, cool northwesterly flow, a bit drier, but still not that hot. Now, August 30th and 31st, Nick low comes in. Now, look at this change that takes place in September. Look at that change. So after, like, low pressure, low pressure, low pressure, no break since June 25th, September 1st. I don't know what I did there. Uh, let's get rid of that, please. Okay. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Okay. Get rid of that. Right, back to business. So after no let up at all since June 25th, we go to September 1st. Look at that. Heights are rising. Between the Azores up to Scandinavia. 
Uh, still though, we have a showery day, but by the 2nd of September, we are under a proper area of high pressure. Upper temperatures are warming up as well. Uh, so after, like, we go through high summer, we have nothing apart from low pressure and no pressure. A few, a couple of days of dry weather, like August 9th, like, summer. Here, here comes, like, uh, summer in awesome. Te technically. Upper temperatures go hot even by, like, the, uh... 5th of September, the 20 Celsius ice term gets, gets in the UK. It is amazing, remarkable how you just, you know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, after this, we see a trough coming in from the west, and that brings more storms towards the end of the first week of September, and we gradually see a breakdown from the northwest. So we see some more wet weather beyond that then. And actually, this day, Friday, Friday the 15th, is very wet and cool. Upper temperatures have cool air, very cool air, coming from the north, and some very warm air towards the south. And we have a, a stark contrast in temperatures here, on this line here. And that is where we saw a lot of rain on this day. After that, anyway, we see that low clearing away, but some more temperature. But we see more lows to our north. They bring in showery, wet, westerly winds. Uh, so you know the story. Um, September was actually very wet, even though it was warm to start off. We end September with Storm Agnes there on the 27th. Brought some very windy weather and wet weather, especially in the south again. And that cleared off. And, and the last day of September saw rain. Rain. Okay, first of October here. A bit milder, I think, but it's quite wet. Anyway, more pressure comes in for a time before we see a ridge to our south forming by the weekend. Um, now, this is very interesting. We see a ridge to our south bringing up this very warm, southerly winds, and then this ridge to the north bring, trying to bring down cold winds from the north. Um, upper temperatures, look at that. The plus 15 Celsius ice therm is like up to, up to the north coast of Northern Ireland. We, and we have the zero ice therm down towards like Aberdeen and Inverness. Big, a huge contrast in temperatures there in just about like about 200 miles or so. So, you know, for Scotland that weekend was absolutely soaking wet. But for us, it was quite cloudy, um, at least in the coast where I am, but I think inland, there was some sunshine, and it was very warm as well. After that, the height stayed there pretty much, until we get to about the 11th of October. That is when it breaks down, and we see a northerly plunge by the 13th and 14th. That brings a colder weekend for that weekend. Um, after that, we see Storm Babette there throughout this week here. So we see this deep low to our west, strong southeasterly winds, especially especially further north, and copious rainfall, especially for Scotland there, exposed to those winds off the North Sea. There are two red warnings. First one on Thursday the nineteenth, and second on on Saturday the twenty first. But even for Ireland, it was a soaking week. Um anyway, that low gets out of the way and easterly comes in briefly before that's cut off and we see more low pressure coming in from the west as usual and we end October 23 on a very wet note this deadly Jawsome was was at its peak in October now into into now into the start of November we start with complex areas of low pressure this one in particular is Storm Kieran that brought a severe battering to southern UK and northern France, severe, severe winds and storms. There's actually a supercell reported in on in the uh, Carolines on the night of the 1st of November, so that storm also had a s severe storm that brought big hail. Anyway, after that, we, that low clears away and another low comes hot on its heels. So guess what? It's very, very wet. Um, and it keeps going into November. Constant lows, no break pretty much. Uh, you know, 
And two of the awesome, a passing here, is that we have a blocking to our north. It's weak, so it doesn't get cold air southwards to us. But what it does do is it, it keeps the jet stream south shifted enough to keep the low pressures over us all the time. So normally these lows pass to our north, but in, but in this autumn they pass right over us. And that brought copious, copious rainfall on and on and on. Anyway, we go into the third week of November and we see a change to higher pressure as this ridge comes in from the west and actually we go to a more typical sort of low. Low to the north, high to the south. And actually, in, in this situation, the height of the south is the dominant factor. It's quite cloudy, yes, but we saw a break from the constant rainfall before that. Anyway, this high pressure tries to get northwards by the 24th of November. That uh, allows a chillier weekend here. Not overly cold, though, but it was very, very cold for the east of Europe. Anyway, beyond that, heights rise to our north. S Siberia towards, towards Greenland. Big blocking forms, and we get a cool, a cold spell at the end of the month. So down comes that minus five ice term, and it gets cold with frost and wintry showers. Now into the first days of December, we see that blocking stay for a time, but the lows start gathering pace to our west and south. And by Wednesday, the sixth of December, we go milder and wetter. And it actually turned out to be a very, very mild December. So let's see how it happened after such a cold start. So we see constant low pressure coming in for a time there. Very, very wet. Deluge is back. Deluge is back. Um, and then we see a very zonal flow. And this was very, very mild. High to the south, low to the north. But look at that. This wind is coming up all the way from the Azores. The plus 10 ice storm is getting towards, towards Ireland at that point. So... This, very, this really made things get very, very mild. Um, very, very mild spell here around the 15th to the 18th of December. That clears away if we go into a cooler run of winds, but even that is quite mild. Thursday, the 21st, was um, quite stormy actually, with a very severe gust of wind for a time. Now, beyond that, we see another very, very mild push of winds on the weekend. It, before Christmas, with a uh, long fetch again, southwesterly winds, upper temperatures, hot. Look at that. Um, so, this December, although it started very, very cold, turns very, very mild because of those long, long fetch southwesterly winds. And they brought clouds, just leading skies. Anyway, this is. This is um, Christmas Eve, and you can see that we are br bringing down the westerly flow, well, I mean, the, the uh, very, very mild there, but, but even by Christmas Day, we see a day of showers. Beyond that, then, Boxing Day is a drier day, but rain comes up from the south, and by Wednesday, we have Storm Garrett's, and that brings battering, especially, especially for the western south, and that storm I talked about, that su that supercell, that, that tornado in Manchester. And Thursday, the, the, the 28th is westerly and showery. And I'll just show you today at New Year's Eve. And, um, you know, today we have a very windy and showery day. So, wait, no. The 29th was showery and windy. Yesterday, the 30th, saw heavy rain in the morning, followed by blustery showers, especially in the west. And then today, New Year's Eve, as you can see, we have loads of the north and showery, strong westerly winds, all north westerly winds. So that concludes the year. Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. Um, we have gone through every single day of weather of 2023, and what a year it was. Constant rain, pretty much. Well, I mean, January, February were quite dry, especially like late January, early February, actually. Early January, uh, early January was was wet, but all in all, very very wet year. Apparently, the warmest on record. Um, though, uh, though I mean, it probably highlights how warm autumn was. 
because summer really was not it was not warm apart from June. Uh, December was very mild. January was quite mild, but had a cold spell. February was very very mild. So and, and the spring was about averageish. So yeah, that's much everyone. I will see you later on for our last video of of this year, our usual updates, and bye for now.